We have our map picks and bands in the Moon vs. Fortitude matchup, another Night Elf vs. Human. We're gonna see three or maybe four matchups of this today. And we have Amazonia and Concealed. Very, Amazonia. very different. Yes, very unusual to see, especially Amazonia left in the pool. Normally it's always vetoed by the humans, but Fortitude vetoes Autumn Leaves and Last Refuge instead. Doesn't want to have to deal with the Beastmaster. Moon vetoes Echo Isles, where an MK fast expo has been looking really good yeah. lately. And Northern Isles, as always. Especially Amazonia, we hardly see that anymore at this point in time. But Fortitude trusts in his ability, and that may, might mean he doesn't want to play fast expansion. Okay then, we'll see how Fortitude and Moon are approaching this matchup. Pretty much do or die for Fortitude in this match. And for Moon, could be smooth sailing into the round of A. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. So far, Moon's year has been pretty good, I would say. Um, Huya win, Dreamhack Summer win, Ted Cup win. He shows up to a lot of tier 2 tournaments, also in the tier 1 tournaments. Uh, he's looking decent. WGL Winter, he made it all the way into the grand final against Infi. He wants to go there again. He wants to claim his second Gold League title in his 11th appearance. He was uh, only missing one of the Gold Leagues. No, that's... Wait, is that Fortitude? No, that's him. Uh, yeah, Fortitude. He has to show up here big time. And I wonder how he deals with the Keeper pressure. Keeper it is indeed on the first map, which is... Uh, Concealed is the only map where we always know what's going to be played. It has to be Keeper. It's not good for a Beastmaster. It's not good for a Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter is just not a good first hero right now against Human. And uh, yeah, Warden here would be pretty suicidal. Now, we have seen it sometimes, but the Keeper is just always reliable. You can creep level 2 quickly, and you can harass a possible Human expansion very, very well. There's a first big decision here to be made for Fortitude. Does he want to fast expand? Or does he want to go for a one -bit? So hard on this map. But yeah, maybe he wants to put a spin on things. He gets level 2 reliably first, I think. On this patch, these guys met each other three times. All games went to Moon. On this patch, he is indeed 7-4 and four against Human Fortitude, against Night of 7-7. Seven to seven. Did lose his last two encounters here. And Moon... Historically very, very good against 4 2 There's also on a 5-0 and o win streak against the Young Chinese. Going to go for a fast level 2 here. The items can have quite some impact in the early game. Gauntlets and Circlet. Decent items for the Keeper. Not completely amazing. Ring, not a good start for Fortitude. I feel like we've seen quite a few rings for these Archmages. Ring and Slippers, not too impressive. But the footy sees what's going on with the Keeper, and I wonder if Fortitude is going for this newer-ish late expansion. Something that Chimiko has been playing a lot is delay the expo until like 1900 hours, well into nighttime. Go for the dust first and call tons of militia, like nine militia, to make sure you creep this expo safely. That is very true, Mr. Remodio. I think if you find uh, six rings on a map, it should turn into a banana phone. Ring, 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 ring. Banana phone. That's an OP item right there, but we'll see. This will probably... Or maybe probably... if you have five rings, you can combine them into some kind of a gauntlet that increases ah. your strength as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that Wait as well. What? Alicia? Where you going, boys? Where you going? Is he expanding on the high ground? No. What is he doing? Tower He's push. towering! What? Tier 1 tower push. Moon sees it a bit late, perhaps. The archer is running over, but I think now he knows what's going on. Okay, all right. Tower repair rate has been improved in this patch, especially on scout towers. It's really good. We were all concerned that perhaps tower push meta was going to return, but we have hardly seen it at all. Now we're going to see it, though. Moon cancels the tech. Going all into defense. All right, defend is coming. Speaking of defense, and yeah, three towers coming up here. He does have treants. Mana's looking good. It just turned nighttime, so for the beginning of this push, Moon is having constant regen of mana and HP. First two wits here were supposed to detonate, but they got taken out. So those detonates didn't connect. It's kind of a big deal. What's Moon going for? Probably just more archers. Normally, we would also see Ancients of Wars being built here to defend with, which can be very helpful. 700 gold for Moon! 
800 gold, he's not spending it. What is happening? Uh, for f that is crazy. Yeah, it's a little bit misleading as uh, the resources are swapped, but the towers are coming up, are they not? And then he has a very good weapon against especially the Treants. Piercing damage, amazing at the top, but to see it here, new repair rate, keeps that one up as well, deals with the next tree, and this is an exceptional opening for Fortitude. Can he turn this into a map win? Yeah, one tower pushed it, I haven't seen this in the forever. Balls on Fortitude. Musa with so much gold. And he didn't man, tech, he... man, he doesn't get a Beastmaster or a Tinker or an alchemist or a panda to help defend this. He stuck with that ticket for a long time. Aim is close to level three, so is the keeper. Who's gonna get it first? Mana is low on both sides, but now with the first tower standing, things get really difficult for Moon. Yeah, not level three yet, but super close. Next kill is the level two water elementals. Two towers up, third one about to be up, laying siege to the moon wells, to the regen. And it's only six archers here. The defense footman again, Lifesaver for the human. Level three simultaneously at the same time. Keeper now can easily deal with the footies as long as he has the mana. That it has to be used again to burn mana off of the AM. But he's still very close to the water elemental. More towers are coming and I'm not sure how Moon is going to get out of this. Does Moon have a building upper left next to Fortitude's expansion? I think that's just wisps. Okay. Maybe wanted to detonate against the creeps, but all right. Moonwell's falling super quickly, but that's the last thing, I guess, that Fortitude can attack from this position with the towers. He can fall back into that safety zone to heal up with the shop. Both are level three now. So hard to defend on tier one. This all is finally gonna finish, but what are you gonna make now, Huntresses? Against glaives? towers, that also doesn't seem to be the best. Oh yeah, glaives, true. But the Age of War not in the very best position for this, I suppose. Keepers can be the out mana. Everything's about to die. Forger's gonna take this one up. Oh my god, one kill, two kills, three kills, four. Um, this... Am I still dreaming? What is this day? Absolutely wild games on this day, too. That's for sure. Moon is still trying it though, hoping that perhaps the Glaives can do it for him. But doesn't have an Agent of War right now and so many towers starting also to, ta to do damage against this Tree of Life. Yeah. But as I said in Dreamhack Summer in the lower bracket of the group, Fortitude had Moon all on the verge of being eliminated, but Moon found the way back. Does he see the answers even in this gruesome position? He's going for an AP in the back of the base, but against defense footies, that is not always so impressive. First glaive is going to come out in a moment, but the AM can pressure that glaive easily with water elementals here. Yeah. 3.4 3 on this Archmage. And he's just crawling forward little by little with these towers. Incredible. He could just hug the tree and probably get rid of it, but... He's not taking that risk yet, reliably taking out the units, getting rid of the damage. Moon is down to 21 supply, and now he's focusing that tree. That's the only source of income for the fifth race. And what can you do without it? Nothing but tap out fortitude. What a day for the human so far. Hawk getting wow. a win over Lin, 15 sway facing Law Lion, and victoriously emerges from that. And now it's 1-0 for another underdog here. Crazy. Fortitude and these high pressure scenarios and the tower pushes. Thinking back to Dreamhack, you remember that three, oh no, it was WGL, game three decision time against Lin and he busts out the Fire Lord tower yes. push on AZ. Now it's the tier one tower push on Concealed Hill. And as a competitor, as a Night of player, you just don't have that on your radar anymore. Nobody plays this. Nobody plays With it. the exception, I guess, of Fortitude. And Moon scouted too late. He was across the map, he was way out of position. If he's there right away when that push hits, it might be looking different. Maybe he should have TP'd to get back home. That TP that he kept didn't really do anything for him, but I guess mainly it was 700 gold at some time. You have to spend that money. Make wisps, like endless wisps from the Tree of Life, yeah. and make Angels of War everywhere. Some of them will get canceled, but not all of them should 
And yeah, that defense by Moon just wasn't the greatest. Man. Then I live to see the day where Moon gets fooled by a tier one human tower rush. Of course, legendary game. WCG 2013, where TH did that to him. I think all the old Warcraft fans remember that one. Fortitude taking a play uh, out of the playbook from TH there. And now this group is wide open again. Imagine Fortitude winning Moon. Then all the three heavy lifters have a win in that group stage. Why not with these results today, dude? Hawk takes the map off of Lin. 15 Sway beats Law Light, and now. Now this is Forge really going to 2 0. <laughs> that would be wild. We see the highlights. Arjuns were running around, having a tough time connecting with the damage. And the two West, I think this was a big deal. Here we see the two West. Yeah. Both killed. Yeah. No detonates. Yeah, if if you reduce the mana pool of the Archmage right here, then it's very hard to summon the next one. There comes an additional. I agree. Not the perfect answer. I think Lawlight is still the master in defending these pushes, but Moon, another five-star performance here after being so flawless yesterday. That's his first real test in this tournament, and maybe he's not in the great shape that we thought he would be yesterday. Man, wild strategies here today. Probably gonna be a one-off only. I don't think this is gonna work a second time. This just might be a once a tournament kind of strategy yeah. because all the Nidals from now on should be scouting for this. Have a wisp close to the main base. Look for the peasants walking over if you can afford it and be very diligent and very quick with your reactions. <sighs> Can't believe my eyes, man. This WGL. I think they did a very, very good job with the format, as this map is so important as well. Jeez, Lou, ease. Okay, we're moving on to the next map in just a bit, and we are at halftime. The three remaining games here today are Colorful versus Sock, it is Lin versus PCG, and the main event sees Foggy against the man of the hour, that is 15 Sway. But yeah, first, of course, we have to see if Moon is getting his fourth point in the group stage, or if Colorful will redeem himself from the loss yesterday. That would be such a big, big, big time win for him. The group stage is getting turned on its head. Yeah. Looking at the table, it seems like anything's still possible for anybody. I mean, yeah, for PCG, it's looking a little rough, and for Alice, but for everyone, it seems like this playoffs is still very much true. But of course, we're still at the early days of the group stage. We're going to have four days of group stage and two days of playoffs to determine our champion. So we're not only halfway, not even halfway through yet. And we're quickly, quickly eliminating all these clean vests. Moon now has dropped a map. Lin has dropped a map. It's only 15 Sway and Colorful <laughs> and Chemico. And Chemico. The clean 2-0. Focus also there. We're gonna be seeing him. Not today, right? Yeah, not today. Yeah. I mean, uh, you say PCG has no chance, but uh, the Undead is up against two human players, right? If you, if you ask a certain someone in the scene, then it should be two clear wins for PCG. Thanks to the matchup. Yeah, as everyone yeah. knows, it's been looking uh, very good or much better for human recently than before. I like that uh, Todd also realized this and uh, saw the truth and proclaimed it on Twitter. Shall I, shall I put up the tweet? Yeah, shall I? Your sure. little interaction there? Yeah, I said it's, uh, it's the day and age of human. And it so far remains true. Yeah, that was taught yesterday on Twitter. This is the best time for human versus in a long time. Quote, Remo Demo 2021. Not sure what his intentions were posting this, to be honest. <laughs> I think I do know. You do? But I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it as a compliment. I think, uh, I think I'm right. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> um, yeah, you always yeah. think you're right, man. One, <laughs> one plus one is three. Remo Demo. No, sometimes, sometimes I'm not sure. But on that one, I am pretty sure. Also sure that we're going to see an unusual map now, Amazonia, for our second map. And you know what? Amazonia can be tough for fast expansion play. But for tower pushes, Yo! it is infamously good. Let's effing go, Fortitude. Do it again. Amazonia, our next map. It is the home turf of all Night Elves. It is Moon's one of Moon's favorite maps here. 
uh, yeah, he has to have that in the back of his head now, right? Like, this was the map where Fortitude did it to Lin. A different matchup, of course, but shows the guts of Fortitude. Dude, if he does it again. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, imagine if he had just skipped the altar, sent three peasants over right away and go for that instant <laughs> tower push. <laughs> Good Korugnol times back in EPS. But no, that's not going to be the play here. We're going to have an AM first against most likely a Keeper. Yeah, keeper, Demon, else. Warden are all possible here. Ooh. Demon Hunter. Okay, against Mountain King. What? Oh, that's not what 40 wanted to no, see. No, that's a hard counter if I ever saw one. Mountain King heavily relies on mana. Demon Hunter gets rid of mana, leaving the Mountain King basically as a big bearded footman. On some maps, it can be okay. It can be not as devastating. For example, Last Refuge, Echo Isles, Terra Stand. Easy expansion maps, right? You creep level two, you call the militia, you expand, and the demon hunter oftentimes can't do too much. If he comes in too close, he gets a hammer to the head, he gets surrounded, he has to TP out. On easy expansion maps, that is. Now we are, however, on Amazonia. <laughs> and yeah. if you try to creep this one without water elemental, I yeah. say, good luck to you, sir, because that ain't gonna be easy. That's nice of you. Wishing him well. Demon hunter out. Depends a little on the items. How much pressure you can do in the mid game goes for evasion first. Interesting, but I mean this camp is a guaranteed level two, so why not close of attack? Very nice, good start for Moon. Yeah, this early game is already shaping up very well. Even the gauntlets are pretty good. Bonus HP on the Demon Hunter always appreciated. Yeah, for the early trades, that's that's kind of fine. So far, nothing built in the main. If this would be colorful, I would be bank... Wait, he's not spending his second skill point yet. Is he going immolation? <laughs> that would be so weird. Colorful uh... would probably do it. Okay, there's mana burn. Boo. I'm gonna take a couple of birds to dry up this MK. Here's the first one. Oh, he has a wisp close by. Either to detonate or to counter block for a surround. That's kind of cool. Okay. Yeah, but Fortitude seeing this demon hunter doesn't like no. this, uh, this exposure here to the mana burn. Colorful is normally the only Night Elf who plays demon on this map, but Moon shows that he can still do it. The old school style. I mean, if you play it perfectly and uh, get, get an expo up and always stay out of range and use the storm bolts well, uh, and then with the expansion money buy mana potions, it's absolutely no issue, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> of course trolling here, but if Fortitude <laughs> manages to expand and get to 80 supply and use invis and stuff, evade some mana burns, slow down the demon, it can work, but yeah. early on, it's a headache. Also, a, a Blood Mage could be a very good solution on Tier 2, but for yeah. that, you have to reach Tier 2, and that is not the easiest task here at all. Harass begins, one worker already hurt, second worker, or oh, nice split by Moon, making sure to get the double kill here. Big last hit. These archers could try to get the right click steal. It's gonna be tough though. Mm, so a lot of damage coming out from the rock on Oh, the demon almost got surrounded! That would have forced the TP and would have ensured this expansion coming up. The expo will come up sooner or later. The human can always secure this with the militia. The question is just how expensive is it going to be? MK gets three. Oh, and a big mana potion. That's a good one indeed. The, you said it. The expansion will come rather so, uh, uh, sooner or later, but I would say rather later. Now it's up to Fortitude to pressure Moon a little bit. Don't let this Demon Hunter unfold. Don't let him get to level three. He has... A lot of footmen that deal well with the archers. Staff, okay. Goes for the staff and goes over to the peasants again to harass them. Has staff to get back if necessary. One shadow melt, but there should be a reveal. Yeah. One archer killed. Decent progress. Oh, these peasants oh, are looking quite hurt. Yep. One, two. Okay. A little bit of of time for counter pressure and uh, no mana burn here it doesn't want to pop the potion of course will he use another reveal could be a double kill human got very very good in killing moon wells that could slow down moon by quite a bit 
Here, two is finished. Moon could go for a second here. What do you, you want to go for here? Naga or Naga. Panda would be kind of the usual choices. Naga would be the norm, right? Yep. But 40 is getting quite some kills. I think more than usual. And is the Panda keeps up the pressure. It's going to be more damage towards these peasants. Demon Hunter already level 3. And the tech for the human is being delayed by so much. Yeah, some archers are going down. And some wisps are... But this expansion is still not really mining. I think he killed the lore just now. So Dryads are also delayed. Demon Hunter comes back. It doesn't have much to burn. And gets this around. Has to go for the TP, man. Lots of traveling for this Demon Hunter. Good damage, of course, as well. Oh, he's next to the Moonwells. Should you surround next to the Moonwells? Oh, and he walks out. Great play here by Moon. The panda stayed in the north, killed off some more peasants, and it's actually absolutely been a peasant slaughter over here on AZ. Six footing still able to do something, but this demon hunter is poking away, and he's got the mana burn ready to prevent the next storm bolt. Quite tanky here is this demon hunter with level three and the items that he got. Panda saying hello has one more breath, has actually plenty more breaths, as we see there. Okay, it seems like Moon is in control of this game, but only for a limited amount of time. Oh, well, that's a lot of time. Tech hasn't even started yet. Resources look a little dire. Once Dryads come out, there's going to be a lot of catch potential. Fortitude knows this is going to be soon, so he's going to have to go for defend as well, which takes more lumber. But yeah, with that Shredder, he's going to have tons of lumber very soon, as the lower finally finishes... Should be a counter expansion for Moon in the south, right? Kind of likely. Might be the Ancient of War still. Oh, yeah. Trying to go for the Demon Hunter again. Shredder, uh, not going to work. Rather, participates in the fight. Staff now. No Stormbolt. Not the fastest game for Moon. Also, Panda. Almost no progress. It is an expansion. There's yeah, there's the Tree of Life. And going for a Shredder as well. Uh, Zeppelin as well. Zeppelin for Fortitude. Also, that if he sees this Tree of Life, he has the window to cancel it. Is he going to see it, though? Ooh, he's flying across. Yeah, okay. Zeppelin keeps tabs on this. Kind of nice. Delays the creeping of the expansion even further. Oh, the panda creeping and the Diva Hunter is going to have to solo deal with the Zeppelin drop. Okay, Dryad's also though. coming in. The Zeppelin, how cool is this by the way? It spots for the enemy Zeppelin and it can get the Diva Hunter out of surrounds if he should land in one. Yeah, it does, does create a new threat, that's for sure. I like that. It's a little expensive, but he doesn't have to rush anything. Fortitude now on 600 gold, close to be 700, heavily banking while teching for the big upgrades for the tier 2 hero and all the units he needs. Moon will still take some time. I wonder if he's on the way to tier 3 or not. Oh, can he steal I the rock on him? Would be a great grab to get here. Wow. Preventing the panda levels always very valuable. But these buildings are also <coughs> pretty tanky. Nature's Blessing was researched early on. So very hard to get these kills. And tier 3 starts doing this all off of only one lore. Moon heavily trusting in his heroes, not needing too many drives and bears early on. Okay. That means if Fortitude gets to tier 2 and goes for the triple production building, he could overwhelm Moon quickly, no? It's still a ways off, though. He needs a lot more infrastructure first. He needs a lot more mining time first. He's not even at 50 supply. Moon is going to be mining himself in 50 seconds, and his tier 3 and bears are right around the corner. Moon needs a second lore right now, and then he can go quickly into bears here soon. <sighs> but how quickly is it really when he doesn't have that second lore? Tier 3 yeah, and griffin aviary! <laughs> okay, you know, griffins are pretty good against bears. That is absolutely, that's absolutely true, yes. And griffins against the panda. I mean, a griffin is not a gargoyle that falls instantly. There's the zirkling, by the way. Yeah. Griffins can be really good. The problem with the griffins is they get super hard countered by, uh, by hippos. 
So oftentimes humans, or not often, but sometimes they also play mass dragon hawks against Night Elf. It was Scout, by the way. The Wisp was in the main, and I think he saw the production buildings. Great Scout for Moon. He should realize what's going on. Okay, that's a lot of information. Fortitude, despite the Shredder, very, very low on lumber. Mismanaging the resource a little bit. By Moon, it's on the other side. Maybe they should, they should start a trade. Oh, getting that shop kill is a big deal. That's before Orb of Venom. Yep. And I guess, especially against air, the orb is so important. Like, we praise the orb for the damage, but for the demon hunter to be able to attack air, it's amazing. Oh, that shredder. Moon doesn't want to lose the shredder. And with Bash. the Zeppelin, there should be no way of killing it usually. Yeah. This, this Zeppelin is... purchase has been genius for Moon. Yeah. Also, Fortitude, I think, creating a lot of trouble with that. I really like their play here. Triple Griff Naviary, of course. 2,000 gold. Foot of accuracy, four moon. That's also not too bad if you go heavy into range. It's Dragonhawks, by the way. It's probably gonna be mainly Dragonhawks, like 10 or so, and then a couple of Griffins mixed in. This is a strategy that we saw quite a bit on Terrana stand when it, is, when it was still in the pool. Alchemist second, by the way. Alchemist second, oh yeah, okay. He'll spray pretty good, yeah. but also he's going to suffer from this mana burn. Yeah, but can mana burn all? Can you? Yeah. Well, depending on how long the fight goes, I guess. True. MK already out of mana. Minus six. He shows him who's boss. <laughs> but so far, Fortitude is not in fighting shape. It says 64 supply, but a lot of that is still in production, not part of the fight, especially lacking piercing damage against the Dryads. Getting it quickly though. From Triple Aviary, more and more Griffins coming in. Dragon Haze, Breath of Fire. Oh my god, the damage. Is Burr. there a heal scroll? Uh, well, he's next to the shop. He could go for it, but he could also just let the footman die, deny it, the, uh, but the Demon Hunter gets level 4. Super hard to deal with now. He had two heal scrolls at the start of the fight. He's starting to burn the uh, Dragon Hogs. That's of course also doable. But it's gonna take a lot of mana to deal with all of them. Oh yeah. Well, uh, prepare for the for the hippos to come in, so you can use few shackles. We Wait. could actually go mass archers here. I. Right? Well, it's super dangerous though against MK. Yeah. You know, you can try to rely on yeah, the yeah, yeah. mana burn, but suddenly mana potion and then uh, sad times. Here comes, comes the in again. Blood Mage, but oh my god, the Breath of Fire was really good. The Dragonhawks get the heal scroll. We have an Alchemist now as well for Siphon Mana, so not too much mana on the Panda and the Demon Hunter anymore. And he can also feed it to the Mountain King, of course. Big Mana was already popped. Dragonhawks survive quite a bit. Supply window is narrowing. But Moon feels like he has to TP out of this, have the expansion pay off. And this is not the worst game I've ever seen for a human playing mass air. It did lose a fair chunk of, chunk of army there, though. You need at least 70 supply to take these fights. Also, you need lots of upgrades, which I imagine he has. Well, 1-1. One, one. Not that good yet, honestly. And he used one heal scroll there as well. Also, you need heal scrolls badly, obviously, against the panda. Now going double workshop. Okay. Um, Might be seeing a tank transition. I was about to say, dude, is it the 40 special? Is he going for tanks, really? I mean, it's only Dryads. It takes forever to kill them with Dryads, the tanks. Anti-magic potion, very valuable to have here. That means the Demon Hunter cannot get Siphon Mana, cannot get Storm Bolted, also yeah. valuable on a Panda. Has a somewhat long cooldown in the shop, 100 gold, but absolutely worth it. It's just mass dryads for moon. Should have some upgrades as well. Yep, 2-1 on those dryads. And now going for the red camp. Big drop here. This is going to be panda level 4. And possibly an aura. Hmm. Could be very, very good for sure. Especially movement speed. Would be amazing. We'll see it in a second on the heroes here. Oh, a little more damage with the Warsong Battle Drums. You won't say no to that. Double bonus damage aura now. Plus 14% nowadays. <sighs> Alchemist and Blood Mage have a hard time leveling now. He's yeah. trying. Left hand side of the map is still open. So, 
Is it mortars? Is it gyros? Is it tanks? Yeah, Foytu doesn't have much supply open. I guess that's the problem here. But yeah, it is mortar teams. We all know how crazy good frag shards are, especially against dryads. And that's finished. And the upgrade just finished. And this is the perfect moment for it, right? He can hide the mortars behind the buildings. Dryads can't re really reach. Alchemist is a little bit of trouble. More Mountain King trying to go for a new position. Oh my god, the damage of the panda. Dragonhawks <laughs> just super hurt. He needs a million heal scrolls here. The interesting thing about Breath of Fire damage is it is unit capped in terms of how much damage it does, but the damage over time of Breath of Fire Ignite Burn, that one is not capped. That can hit all the units. So it's a lot of damage potentially or definitely from this panda. Here, but we here. have the Alchemist, we have Healed Scrolls, we have Region Scrolls. Lots of regenerative options for Fortitude. But Moon's Army, also now huge. Just Dryads, his favorite unit. Duck and cover, Mr. Remo Demo with the Knowledge Bomb dropped. Yeah, the panda, he wasn't too popular for a while, but on the most recent patch, he received a buff, and we've been seeing him more and more. The big Breath of Fire AoE damage once again looking good, especially, of course, if he gets to 5. The Demon Hunter is very close to 5 already, and the panda might get there as well. His position looking pretty damn good for Moon, I think. Yeah, but uh, still, there's big level ups to come for Fortitude if the game goes a little longer. It is a very one-dimensional army for Moon. He has... Good damage against it, piercing damage, siege damage, we talked about frag shards who are just exceptional. And it's a lot of mortars already. Yeah. If Moon isn't on top of his Dryad micro, these human hero levels can spiral out of control. Like, kill six, seven Dryads, boom, suddenly you have three level ups. <sighs> oh, there's a fight brewing. Did he get another heal scroll? He absolutely needs them. And he needs to siphon that panda. That breath wasn't too great. Can he protect these mortar teams? Moon spinning his drives into two different groups, diving in right away, making it hard for the mortars to attack properly. One mortar staff down, two more going down. And a wonderful arc again by these drives in a yeah. big circle, 360 degrees, surrounding these dragon hawks, forcing another TP out. <sighs> and that fight clearly goes to Moon. Now, almost level 5 pan, now he got the level 5 demon already. He could go for the red camp, and now it seems like the fifth race is gonna get the equalizer. Dryads in the hands of Moon are just such a thing of beauty. I guess if he wins WGL, the stained glass is not going to be a demon hunter or a warden or a keeper. It's going to be a dryad then. Yep. Yeah, wait, have we had a keeper there yet? No. No, right? no, 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 no. It started with uh, TH's win, then it was the Archmage, and he got happy with the DK or vice versa. And then it was the Blade Master for Lin. Yeah, and now the Blood Mage. And now the Blood Mage. Before that, of course, <laughs> Moon was able to win WGL that one time against Foggy in the final. A there a keeper now. would have been fitting. We did see him quite a big bit back then, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Oh, it was fun. <laughs> Dude, that was the worst WGL of all time. Uh, six supply mountain giants, just 80 supply pure MGs. Those were the days. Mountain Giant Mirror was super fun, though. <laughs> and Glaive Mirror, I know how much you love that. Oh, yeah. I missed it every day. We can play a couple of Glaive Mirrors if you want to, if you miss it so much. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. So, late game calming down a little bit. There's two heal scrolls for Moon. There is zero heal scrolls for Fortitude. And I kind of wonder why he has the resource for it. Maybe he's a little too cautious, expecting a Moon push. Yeah, he was having a tough time, I think, getting to the shop. Now he's finally there. Moon is going to try to punish him for it right away. But the MK gets out with the staff. He did get both heal scrolls. It's still sitting on these two bases. The main is going to expire any moment now, but the natural will not. This natural has 20,000 gold, so we're going to be here possibly for a while, folks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this natural expansion of Amazonia, a very unique aspect to the game. Is it good? Is it bad? Well, well, there are certainly uh, differing opinions about that, but they can, they can certainly sit on that position for quite a while. 
We did mine it out twice, I think. Remind versus Mikael comes to mind. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Next big camp going to Moon. He's kind of slot starved here. Oh, level Get five. Kinda. Wait for that damage. Oh, there's the combo. He also, has, the fire. he also has mana potion, which is really great. He has the resource. He has 1,800 gold. So he, he can afford all the mana potions in the world. Only 700 for fortitude. There's a TP still. No mana potion on him. Sounds a little bit like a waste. He's breaking into upkeep now. Is that the one timing that he can hit? Will Moon see that the production buildings are running or will the 90 supply overwhelm the fifth race? Team are baiting a bit here and there. But there should be a staff. Yeah, sweet. Certainly. Yeah, very nicely done. He's level three mana burns very impactful and it's hard for the MK to recover all that lost mana. I mean, yeah, Siphon, but it's only level one Siphon. Bashes the Dryads and they are hit by a lot of volleys from these Mortars. Monkey down to 50% needs the Heal Spray, walks out of it though. These opening moments of the fight go clearly towards 40 and that's the impact of Frag Shards for you ladies and gentlemen. Can he blow through with the sheer mass damage? More and more units are falling on Moonside, Shredder about to fall as well. And the Siphon has to go to work now, Fortitude needs levels. Imara anti magic over, he's in trouble now. Invul potion is going to be used. With that, he survives. Drunken Hates Breath of Fire coming in again. Mana potion was needed. Supply, very even supply. Yeah. Lead almost for fortitude. Great fight for the human. These mortar teams, when they're left alone, have just crazy DPS. Yeah, and Moon. Yeah, the supply is almost even. Fortitude went into this with a supply lead. So, supply wise, it's really good for Moon. But everything Here was so hurt. Goes into the cost of a lot of Moon Wells and gives Fortitude this last creep spot on the map and the big item. The and that gives him the levels he absolutely needs. Level 3 for the Alchemist and super close to level 2 Banish, which is a game changer. Oh, he gets it, actually. Anti-magic on the panda. I think that's more important so that he doesn't get siphoned. If you come in with Drunken Hate's Breath of Fire, use the anti-magic, then you can just stand there and use the next Breath of Fire to ignite a second time. That is possible if you time it perfectly. <sighs> and now this game is uh, very playable again. We've had a lot of comebacks here in this day today. This game, of course, far from over, but it looked really good again for Moon, but... 40 fights his way back. Of course, X-Factor here. Knight of Ultimates, as always. Yeah. Metamorph and Panda ult, both crazy. Think back to Moon's crazy games at WCG. I think it was on Echo Isles. Todd and Rotti were casting that, and... Moon was in a precarious situation there as well. But... Uh, Metamorphosis, Earthstorm and Fire. They're able to salvage a fight that you're not supposed to win. Like what Moon is doing now, though. He's stealing the heal scrolls away. Ooh, that demon was dropping. A, a bit Ooh, by the way, I uh, think we didn't tank. mention this yet. Kakka's pipe for a human for once. Pretty oh, good. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, that's super good. True. Griffin's attitude. It is quite weakened nowadays by 33%, which was badly needed. But it's still very good. Yeah. Not breaking into upkeep. And mains have mined out, so on one base, one base, fortitude. Blasting through his gold. Moon still has a very decent bank. He can rebuild a little. A very competitive match, though. If you just uh, judge this best of two from the performance yesterday, I think we all thought that this would be... A very one-sided affair with Moon taking it, but today, you're yep. living in Bizarro World. Fortitude's strategic approach against uh, Orc really didn't look good. It looked yeah. outdated, it looked yeah. uninspired. But here, he's playing some cool strategies. He's making even MK first work <laughs> against Demon Hunter on Amazonia, which is like outrageous. In the hands of Moon, no less. And there's one big level up 
I'm missing. That's a level 5 on the Mountain King. These bears won't have an easy time, right? Like, the army alone is on paper looking super weak as Fortitude has the countermeasures to everything that Moon has. Yeah. Going into these bears in the first place, interesting choice. Maybe Moon thought he wants to have some good beef on the ground to threaten the heroes while his own panda deals with the air of the opponent over time. Who doesn't but like some beef? I still think this panda huh? should have an anti-magic because there's just absolutely no dispel on the human side. Yeah, his little slot starved at the moment could pass, I don't know. Staff to the demon hunter. Well, the flute to the demon hunter. That would be the best, I guess. Yeah, yeah, flute to the demon. I think that would be the way to go. This is the way. Interesting that 40 is not going for more heal scrolls. The most dangerous weapon that Moon has is the Breath of Fire. Maybe he doesn't want to go out of position, doesn't want to be caught. Are we really going to mine out? 8,000 <laughs> gold left. That must, should be around 15 minutes or something like that. Oh, we got time, right? I've, I've nothing else to do today. Oh, I have to record a podcast. Hey. Oh, you're doing that today? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the topic going to be? We'll see. It's a surprise. Probably WGL. Moon with a lot of gold here. What's Oh, what's he making? Angels of Wind for late oh. game hippos. Okay. Moon feels it's not enough Dragonhawks anymore. Now he can go into Hippogriffs. And the Dark Ranger edition would be decent, I guess, to silence against uh, Shackle. There's no Dispel. Can be, yeah. But it always depends on how much the Dragonhawks are spread out. Sometimes she's a little disappointing. Also, soaks up experience. True. Good point. Fortitude already has one mortar. This transition will take a while for Moon, but he has good vision. Should know when Fortitude is coming and no one's breaking up keep yet. Feels like an x lord game. Yeah, both here looking patient. Nobody overextending. Triple Ancient of Wind. Okay. Well, Moon is going all in. He's spending all of his gold, and we're going to have a lot of hippos here in the mix soon. And that should be like 12 hippos or so? Yep. And yeah, that definitely looks like too much to handle for these Dragonhawks. There's barely any other anti air, right? Uh. The mortars. I guess they should be able to shoot up in the air. I mean, why not? Maybe with a high miss chance or something. Remo, can you can you put that into your next balance uh, sheet, please? Uh, yeah, you know, I think I heard that before. I think Death Note suggested that. Death Note always has great ideas. So, <laughs> oh yeah, man. Think, okay. Well, if I'm good. if I'm on the same page with Death Note, I uh, immediately retract that statement and that suggestion. MK. <clears throat> Important for him here to get the heal scroll. How many does he have now? Three heal scrolls. All right. Okay. He seems to be ready for the panda, but is he ready for the hippos? So will Fortitude respond with gyros? Will he see this? Will he assume that this is happening? Thing is, playing gyros into a level five oh. panda. Oh yeah, is yeah. I kind of kind of forgot about that panda. <laughs> there, that's a good weapon. But, you know, um, maybe he can play around that target limit. You know, wait for the first Breath of Fire, then send the gyros in, siphon in the meantime when the cooldown is running. If you play it perfectly, yeah. then it's easy. You can also Stormbolt control the panda and play around that cooldown with a gyro movement, but that's going to be very hard to do. Yeah, just play perfectly, man. What's the issue? Just play perfect. I mean, what's the problem, exactly? How to supply. All right, boys. 100 supply, dryads, bears, hippos, 3-3 three, three upgrade. It doesn't get much stronger than this. Moon is hiding the hippos. I really, really like that. Not giving them away too early. And I think he can just die of this position. Who cares about three towers in this ultralight game? Oh, yeah. Well, I guess the mortars are very, 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 very protected. That might screw... I, with an air army, that's always a little easier. Panda might not be able to reach. It's a little yeah. tricky. Fortitude right, needs to start production the day before yesterday. 
Gyro's good thing for him. Quick to produce. If he wants a couple of them in the fight. All right, Moon. Is he going in? It is a bit of a needle hole over here. Yeah. Banish Stormbolt right away. And Close Moon's your blocking himself. Close your eyes and hope to die. This is what it is for Fortitude right now. Okay, that air fight is going to be a mess. Demon Hunter under a lot of pressure. Fortitude portals out. No additional damage, but okay. Reposition by 40 Moon. Just escapes the situation, buying more time for Fortitude who immediately breaks up keep. Okay. Well, Fortitude holds the first attack here, the first assault. That's so big as he has time to react now. What's the answer though? He is making gyros. Gyros. Flat cannons. Told but he you. needs like at least eight gyros, so this is at all effective. Smart to kill a couple of workers. Doesn't need too much lumber anymore, I guess. Freeze up supply for the army. Wonder how much, uh, how many Wisp Moon has left. 7,500 gold still available against 5,400. If this fight truly breaks out, this Dimar and Panda must get level five, level six. There's just oh, so yeah. many kills available. Oh yeah, that's a lot of experience. And there's no, like the level 5 MK is close, okay. But apart from that, no big level ups, 3.1 on second and third hero. We're going to go for another safety TP. Looking for a better angle of attack. Of course, you can easily attack the main base here. But does Fortitude want to respond to this? Probably don't want to just want to let it die, perhaps. He still needs time to get up to 100. Or does he? He's giving up that fortified position for the mortars with that. Oh, he's out of lumber, by the way. Oh. Forty has absolutely no lumber left, and I think he killed all of his lumber peasants. Well, well. Then... He's out of gold as well. Three heal scrolls. He's gonna be supply blocked in a second, so he can't produce any units anyway. That's a lot of gyros, dude. Yep. That's a lot of gyros. Dude, he needs like four control groups <laughs> just to fit his army in. Man, would he love to have the F2 button from StarCraft right now? Ten supply lead, but it's not that big of a difference, really. Someone on the panda right away, siphon to control him. The Wrath of Fire connects, but there's just so many units. Oh my, absolute pandemonium here. Who's dropping quicker? Nice dancing with the Dryads, but maybe the Gyros are taking control over the air and then the Mord Oh, Mountain King, super hurt. Then the Griffins, of course, can take control again. But I think this is kind of it in the air. Oh boy, Alchemist is dead. Absolute craziness. We do see the level 6 Demon Hunter Metha. Morphus is coming up. Wait, the pa Wait, did the panda die? No, not really, but the Blood Mage does. And it's GG. Well, that was kind of crazy. <laughs> the late game there. You know, it looked good in the air for Fortitude. The gyros worked out well. There was just too many units to all use Breath of Fire on. But the bears, smart choice. They'd shoot through the ground units. There was no blockers, no knights, nothing. Just the heroes there face tanking the damage and they would just clobber it down. The griffins couldn't take out the bears too quickly because they were also getting threatened by dryads and by hippogriffs. Yeah. Smart play there by Moon in the end with the one heart supply army, he wins that game, but had to work hard for it. And considering it was Amazonia, Mountain King against Demon Hunter, Fortitude played this really well. Yeah, looked kind of good. So Fortitude definitely redemption for yesterday. Puts himself into a decent-ish position. F Focus has to win against Alice, of course. Everybody has to win against Alice. If Focus is getting too old by Moon... Ah, it's still looking rough. It's still looking rough, for sure. If... What, what happens if Focus beats Moon... There could be a tie between Moon and Fortitude. Yeah, it could be a three-way tie. Absolutely. All right, then. Whew, that was a mess of a game. Colorful versus Sock is coming up next. Moon saves his group stage a little bit. With that, has a very, very tough, the toughest game ahead of him versus Focus in the upcoming days.
and it'd be a fun match there. These two have met many times before. I think one of their most legendary encounters, Moon versus Focus, was at DreamHack Anaheim. There was our grand final where Moon looked utterly unbeatable and destroyed Focus swiftly, but Focus has gotten a lot better in that matchup since then, and a few patches perhaps helped out as well. But Fortitude, he is a threat in this group. Absolutely yeah. he is. Well, he has the two biggest obstacles behind him now. A win over Alice would give him four points. Moon already four points. And it's Focus who can push or punch for the playoffs already with his next match tomorrow over Alice. We're moving into Group B after this one. Colorful versus Sock is another Night Elf versus Human matchup. A new approach, a different approach. Probably Bear Heavy and Colorful. Everybody mentions him as one of the top five favorites for this tournament. Yesterday he looked really, really good. Different matchup though. Yeah, speaking of uh, Colorful, he's the guy who loves playing Demon Hunter the most. Demon Hunter normally not much playable anymore nowadays against human. On Amazonia he is, that's the one exception, where he starts off well with creeping, gets some good items, re reliable level 3, good map pressure, and so on. But normally it should be more of the expected. Demon Hunter first, uh, excuse me, uh, Keeper first, Demon Hunter second, with bears and a counter expo. Colorful shouldn't try to go for that big surprise play, but he's just solid. Straight down solid. And Sock, he was looking a bit disappointing leading into this tournament, but yesterday on map 1 against Linguagua, he was absolutely devastating. Map 2, it seemed like he was looking good, but then made one big mistake, being too careless and lost that map. And this is going to be important points, especially for Sock, to have a chance to make it out of the group. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, if he's not winning this... It's looking kind of dire for him, he still has to face Soen afterwards. I think Colorful should go pretty convinced into this matchup. Um, shouldn't worry too much. It's really up to Sock to make this a series. So three upsets already, we're halfway through the day. Three more matches for you, as we mentioned Colorful vs Sock. Also Lin vs PCG and Foggy vs the Man of the Hour 15 Sway. Will the upsets continue? There's definitely potential for that here on the second day of WGL Summer. Yeah, I hope so. It's always a lot of fun when we have these uh, crazy results, when we have these standout performances and these breakout performances as well. Still wondering to see who's going to be the big surprise to perhaps make it into a top four even. I know, Neil, you have high hopes for Lingua Aqua. LGG see? going all if the way, man. I have uh, high hopes for our community as well, as they are supporting us quite well. We have the alerts disabled to keep everything fresh and clean on the broadcast during the Netties Championships right here. But before every break, we thank you. And this time we thank TZ for the 21 month resub, sub Heiner Müller for the 9 month resub, sub and Ninjin Sin for the 37 month resub. sub And we thank the production over there in China, because we are getting another interview. We're going to hear from Moon now. What did he think of that series? It was quite hard fought. It was a grueling series. And Moon's going to tell us what happened. All right. Uh, we'll have to wait for the translation, and then Wong will probably going to be there, or Vangolia. Hello, Moon. Can you please give us a hand? Hello, Moon. Hello, Moon. Okay. 呃，那我们看到今天的比赛的话，确实打得十分焦灼啊。在此之前呢，也有一场人族和暗夜的比赛。那我还是想请教一下莫文，对于现在人族和暗夜的比赛局势是怎么去看待的？可以跟大家来分享一下吗？呃，지금현재휴먼이랑나이트프그아나이트프선수입장에서휴먼전을어떻게평가하고있어요？呃，요즘제개인적인생각으로는휴먼전이좀어렵게느껴지고있고요어패치후로이후로어그렇게된것같고나이트프선수들이열심히해야될것같습니다어我觉得最近的话，呃，精灵族打人族的话是有点难的。自从补丁之后的话，就这个难度有点上去了。希望暗夜精灵的选手可以加把劲。嗯，那也是非常看到了莫恩在这场比赛当中的坚持。那其实还是想要让莫恩去评价一下 Romantic 选手在今天的比赛当中的发挥，来评价一下对手。그오늘포티튜드선수
그 경기에 대해서 혹시 어떻게 평가하세요? 첫 경기는 어, 파워러시 전혀 예상치 못했어요. 어, 쏘더라도 뭐 아마존에서 쓰겠더니 생각을 했는데 어, 거기서 쓸 줄은 전혀 예상치 못했고 어, 상대 선수의 깜짝 전략 결정했고요. 두 번째는 좀 안전하게 하자 해서 어, 선수에도 좀 꼼꼼히 하고 파워러시를 의식해서 안전하게 했던 플레이가 괜찮았던 것 같아요. 呃，首先的话，对于Fortitude选手的话，他没有想到第一局他会来这种就是Tower 老师，然后他以为呃Fortitude选手的话可能会在亚马逊这张图上使用T2战术，但是第一局他没有意意识到，所以第一出掉了第